What's going on YouTube? I hope everybody's had a great weekend so far. And in today's video, I'm looking to create a series targeted towards new or old collectors coming back to the hobby. So whether you're brand new to the hobby and want to get started or haven't collected cards like myself in 20 years and you know beyond, um, I hope this video is very, very informative for you and you get a lot out of it. So this will be one of what I think will be many. Um, I'm gonna try to keep them as concise as possible and that's about it. So the first topic in this video I wanna talk about are buzzwords. So if you are not familiar with card collecting or have been out of it for quite some time, um, there are a few key words I think could be very informative for you to know what they are. The first word is relic. So in the early 2000s, these started to pop out a lot. And I remember my first ever relic was a 2001 Tina Martinez piece of the bat card. I still have it somewhere. But essentially what relic means in today's terms are any game used memorabilia or player worn memorabilia on a card. So a bat, a glove, a piece of the ball, piece of the jerseys are very common. Um, those are all considered relics. Those are typically not as sought after as the next buzzword, and they're a little more common. The next buzzword is an auto, which is short for autograph. So there are a couple of variations of these. One is a autograph that's directly on the card signed by the player. The second is a sticker. The stickers are extremely obvious. They have a little bit of a holographic touch to them. And, you know, in my opinion, they're not as pretty to look at, but it is still the individual's autograph. Um, so in terms of value, I don't think there's a huge difference. The on-card autos might be a little more rare and a little more sought after. Um, but, you know, if you have one of each, I, I don't know if the value would be a whole lot different. You know, you also may see an autograph on eye black or, you know, different surfaces. There are many variations of autographs. The two to really be concerned about are the stickers and directly on the card. The next one, which you're probably a little more familiar with, is the word insert. So insert to me is just any card that's not a base card. So one that touches on you know, a lot of RBIs hit by a player, such as an RBI Kings card. I believe those were in the 90s Fleer Ultra, maybe. I'm dating myself a little bit here. But that's an example of an insert. So it's not a base card. It's not a parallel, which I'll get into in a second. And it's not an auto or a relic. It's just a specialty card. There's typically maybe one per pack. Um, you know, or one in every few packs, um, but th you know, they're different from the base cards. They might have a little more value and they're kind of cool to look at. That is an insert. Next is a parallel. So a parallel is just a different variation of a base card, whether it is the color or the pattern. Um, one of the card manufacturers, Panini, specifically in their Panini Prism set, they're notorious for including parallels in that set. So there could be, you know, the base card is lots of silver and chrome. You know, you'll have a card that's all blue, one that's all red, one that has tiger stripes, one that has snake skin. Um, occasionally you'll see a red, white, and blue parallel. There are all kinds of, you know, different parallels and typically they're gonna be numbered. Um, you know, kind of the lower the number, either the more bold the color or the rarer the card is. You know, there's not really a rule of thumb. You know, you can't say red is always out of five, you know, orange is always out of 25, green is always out of 50. It's specific to each individual set. It just depends on what set you're looking at. Two more key buzzwords are, they go together, I'll explain why in a second, but they are hobby and retail. So retail, is specifically targeted towards cards you'll find in stores such as Walmart, Target, your drugstores, and then occasionally you'll see it searching through cards online. The difference is the hobby cards or the hobby boxes, the hobby sets, one, they have a little H 
on the packs, on the box, there you'll typically be able to spot an H somewhere on the on the product. So this is a Bowman Chrome box, and in the bottom right hand corner you see the H. It's on the opposite side as well. It might be a little easier to see there. That indicates that that is a hobby pack. So hobby packs statistically have better odds on finding the relic and the autos. Um, occasionally they will guarantee an auto and or a relic or multiple in the box. Retail products do not. Um, statistically their odds are typically going to be a little worse and you have no guarantees. You know, key retail items to look for are the blaster boxes, the hanger boxes. They do have retail boxes of packs. You can see those online as well. And, um, you know, typically the product is extremely obvious in whether or not it's retail or, auto or hobby. My personal preference, when I first started getting into the hobby again, I really like the hobby boxes and hobby packs. Just because you're guaranteed an auto, you're guaranteed a relic. There are people out there that I have spoken to that say hobby is a bit of a bait and you should go retail. Now, you know, take everything what people say, including myself, with a grain of salt. You know, they're basing their odds and their findings on a very small sample. You know, maybe that they got lucky and hit two or three packs that were really, really hot from the same store. You know, they it's it's luck. It's, you know, like drawing a lottery ticket. Again, take that with a grain of salt. Buy what you like. Um, the hobby boxes are significantly more expensive, and those, those numbers keep seeming to go up as, uh, you know, the stores get their hand on the product and want to make a little bit of a profit in their sales. So retail is definitely a better value from a financial perspective, but um, it may not yield as good as results. The last buzzword I would like to talk about is the word hit. So you'll see the word hit a lot. I use it a little bit in some of my videos. Um, it's very common in mystery boxes. So really what a hit is, is just a you know highly sought after card. So typically what you're talking about here is an autograph or a relic. They're not specific to any player. They're not specific to any box. Um, it's just an autograph or a relic. That's typically what are called hits. And in some of the mystery boxes, you'll see on their website, they'll include, you know, one hit from your favorite team. Or, you know, this box is guaranteed to have one hit, whether it's from a pack or if the manufacturer inserts, you know, one of the cards from his collection into the, his or her collection into the box. That's what a hit is. So next what I would like to get into are the actual cards. So there are two big players right now in 2020. The first is Topps. They have a slew of products. Um, you know, a few examples are Topps Finest, Top Series 1, Top Series 2, Topps Update, Topps Allen and Ginter, and Topps Finest. Um, there are many, many more besides those. Those are just a handful that came to my mind. Some I like, some I don't. And then the other big player is Panini. Panini has a slew of products themselves. They are quite vastly different to the Topps products and for the most part can't really be compared in my opinion. The big drawback that some people have in Panini is they are not licensed to include the player's team's logo, the player's team's name, and on the card all you're going to see is the city. So if you happen to pull a Ken Griffey Jr. card in a Panini product, assuming he exists in there, I'm not 100% sure, you know, it'll say Seattle. It won't include the word Mariners. You won't see the logo on his jersey. You won't see the logo on his hat. They are photoshopped and or airbrushed out. And for the most part, they do a pretty good job of it. In most instances, it doesn't bother me. I'm not like, hey, you know, this card really just doesn't look good because you're missing the logo or the you know name of the team. In some examples, it does, and I immediately notice it. I'm like, ooh, I really don't want that. Um, you know, maybe at some point Panini and Tops can share that MLB license and be able to 
offered licensed products. Um, you know, in some circumstances, the Panini products are lesser valued. You know, that, that all varies so much, and take that with a grain of salt. I personally like both. Now, in terms of if you want to buy, if you want to get into cards, you know, you, either you took a hiatus like I did or you're just brand new and are overwhelmed with all the different options and variety. So there are two ways to approach that, in my opinion. The first is to narrow down what you actually want to buy. So do you want to buy boxes or retail stuff, retail or hobby? I'm just going to throw that into one bucket called a box. You know, do you want to buy boxes just to crack packs? Or do you want to start a collection of specific players? If you want to start a collection of specific players, my recommendation to you is to go out to eBay and search, you know, Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card. If you specifically want his stuff, you know, check out his rookie cards. Um, if you're really into Fernando Tatis Jr., you know, type in, in go into eBay, type in 2019-2020, um, Fernando Tatis Jr. You know, you're going to get a ton of cards, some worth a lot, some worth not so much. If you're just interested in a card with his name on it, buy the really somewhat inexpensive, you know, 2020 Top Series 1, Series 2 Fernando Tatis Jr. cards. I'm not sure what set he's in. I'm sure he's in one of them, if not both. You know, look at those. They probably run a couple bucks. They're not his rookie card. There's not, There's a ton of them printed. You know, if you just want a card with his name on it, go for that. Um, if you're more interested in buying a box and cracking packs, my suggestion there is to check out a website called Cardboard Connection. So what they do is they list out the checklists and set lists or spec sheets, each pack in each box. So you'll, so you'll see the odds on the hits, the odds on the autographs, um, the odds on inserts, you'll see what the cards look like. It also gives you a checklist of a lot of players. So if there are specific rookie cards you're looking at, that could be a great tool to use to find, okay, I really want, you know, want, um, I'm gonna go back to Tatis. Tatis Jr.'s rookie card, you know, I, I'm fairly certain I did a Google search, his rookie year was 2019. So, you know, you're gonna browse through Cardboard Connection, look at 2019 boxes and find one you like, and then hopefully be able to find it to buy it. Um, I do believe Cardboard Connection has direct links to eBay and maybe Amazon with that specific item if you're looking for it, and you know you can go buy that box. So option number two is find a local hobby shop in your area or go to a local card show. Typically you can find these on Facebook. Um, it might take a little bit of digging and a little bit of Google foo, but you can typically find you know, local card shops on Facebook. They'll have weekly or monthly events. Um, you, know, you can see when and where that is. And second, if you just go down to your local hobby shop, typically the store owner or anybody in there will be familiar with, you know, card shows. Um, you can also explain to him, hey, I'm new into the hobby. I want to get started. This, These are some of the cards I was looking at. You know, do you have them? Or do you mind if I, you know, browse through a bunch of stuff? So typically they have a ton of cards for anywhere from 10 cents to a buck, you know, of rookie cards from this year that are lesser known players. They didn't perform well. They're not in the, you know, they got sent back to the minors. Who knows what reason, you know, a, <clears throat> a player may be, you know, not worth a whole lot. Maybe he's severely underperforming and you might want to target that guy and buy up a bunch of his cards as an investment. You know, your hobby shop guy can help you with that. So if you don't want to do a lot of research on your own, you know, talk to him. Be like, hey, I'm new into the hobby. I don't want to spend over $200 on product. You know, what's really, really good value? And, you know, he might say something like Top Stadium Club. They are absolutely gorgeous looking cards. And in a hobby box, I think you're guaranteed two autos. And... Um, they're, you know, the hobby box is going to be around 100, 120 bucks. So that's what you can do there if you're interested in buying new cards. The next and final item of this beginning video, and this is really more towards brand new collectors, more so than existing. Existing guys probably know that these supplies have been in the 
game for a very, very long time, but the two things I'd like to talk about are what are penny sleeves and top loaders. So penny sleeves are great for, you know, just bare minimum protection. They get the name penny sleeves because, you know, X amount of years ago, they literally used to be a dollar for a hundred. Now they're anywhere from two bucks to three and four, just depending on the store, their markup, and their scarcity. Right now there is a shortage of supplies because there are so many new collectors coming into the scene. Um, I penny sleeve any card I think could be valuable in the long run or cards that have, you know, a little bit of value but aren't super, super, you know, rare or um, just cards I don't think are worth putting into a top loader. The top loaders are the hard plastic shell that a card slides into from the top. These provide a significant amount of protection, more so than the penny sleeve, as they are, you know, hard plastic, they're a lot more durable. And, um, you know, things like spills are less likely to damage the card. So again, um, the two items that you would want to use for any card you think might be valuable, any rookie cards, you know, any autographs, any relics, are the sleeves and the the penny sleeves and the top loaders. There are also different size penny sleeves. You can get larger penny sleeves, which fit, um, which better fit relics, which are significantly thicker cards, you know, on average. And you can get standard ones, which fit, you know, your standard base cards. Also note, you may run into different colors and patterns of sleeves. Um, these are typically reserved for Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon cards. These cards are a little smaller and you want the backs of the cards to not show just because they're typically played in decks <clears throat> as it's more of a game and less of a you know, collection and a hobby. So as a whole, I hope this video was extremely helpful for any new and existing collectors. Um, if you'd like to see more, please let me know. If there's anything you want me to touch on, please let me know in the comments. I would, you know, love to make a video on it. If you enjoyed this video and my other videos, please like and subscribe. And that's going to do it for this one. So have a great day, everybody, and I will see you guys next time.